really understand the properties of different hydrocolloids, we break them out into different categories. In this video, the gum source category that we'll be covering is tree saps, also referred to as plant exudates. All the gums in this category derive from exudations, also known as sap, from plants and trees. For example, what you see when they harvest maple syrup. Gums included in this category are gum arabic, caria, tragicanth, and gaddy, the most popular of these being gum arabic. These gums are hardened sap collections that exude from the plant or tree. Incisions, hole drilling, or natural exudation are the traditional ways of accessing this gum. This is referred to as tapping. Once the gum has exuded or leaked out, dries and is gathered by harvesters, also known as tappers, for sale and distribution. As we mentioned, gum arabic is by far the most commercially popular gum in this category. Gum arabic, in some cases, is referred to as gum acacia, or acacia gum, because it comes from the acacia tree. These terms are used interchangeably, but we'll stick with gum arabic for this video. To collect this gum, commercially available grades of gum arabic are only harvested in Central Africa, where the trees exist in their natural environment. The first known use of gum arabic can be traced back to ancient Egypt, where the gum was used during mummification. So it's been around for quite some time. Gum arabic is utilized worldwide in a multitude of ways. It's used in everything from beverage emulsions and confections to functional dietary fiber. Gum arabic is even utilized in common everyday food and beverages like granola bars and soft drinks. Gum arabic is used as an emulsifier, binding the oil and water ingredients together, keeping the emulsion stable throughout the shelf life of the beverage. It's also used in food to impart specific characteristics, like texture. So don't be afraid if you come across gum arabic on a label somewhere. It may just be what's giving your food that unique texture. Hopefully in this video we've given you a decent introduction to the world of food gums. I know it was a lot to take in. And if there's more learning you'd like to do on food gums, then check out this book by Andrew Heffler called Hydrocolloids. It may be a bit technical at times, but it's a great overview of common hydrocolloids. Also, there are some online journals you can reference, and again, they can get technical, but don't let that slow you down. We hope you found this video helpful and hope it presented a new perspective into the world of food science. Thanks for watching.